Dr. William O'Neill is a medical director at the Henry Ford Health System in Detroit, Michigan, where they're studying both remdesivir and hydroxychloroquine. Some people in the media are treating hydroxychloroquine as if it's something that's being pitched by charlatans, that's dangerous, and that's been debunked and discredited. What do you make of that? I think that's very harmful. Uh, President Trump touted it early, and so then the media set out to disprove and discredit it uh, without any regard for science. I think those of us that are actually involved in the scientific endeavor uh, feel that there is some value to it, and it has to be tested. Dr. O'Neill says he's prescribed hydroxychloroquine to help numerous coronavirus patients and saw improvement in all of them. He's less impressed so far by remdesivir. There's a lot of hype for the drug. I, I saw the original New England Journal article study, uh, and I saw the Lancet study, and to me it's just like a big ho-hum. I just don't see a big benefit to it. Adding to the drama and confusion, a draft version of a study was accidentally published last month showing remdesivir did not help most coronavirus patients and caused such serious side effects, 18 test subjects were taken off the drug. Gilead, the maker of remdesivir, did not respond to our interview request, but has said it ended the study because it couldn't find enough volunteers to take part. Dr. Fauci never really showed any support for hydroxychloroquine, but now he's all about remdesivir. And remdesivir, what came out of that was they said there's a 31% um, recovery time improvement. So basically, instead of 14 or 15 days, patients recovered in 11 days. Now, that's really not that good when you look at hydroxychloroquine, where instead of 14 or 15 days, you were seeing recoveries in five days. And Dr. Fauci never had anything to say about that. And what's even more strange is that Dr. Fauci was the one who sponsored the study for remdesivir. It was through the National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Diseases, and he's the director of that. And it's also worth noting that there was no statistical significance between death rates for people who were on remdesivir and who weren't. I think it was 11% of the people who weren't on it died, and then 8% uh, who were on remdesivir died. So it really wasn't a big difference there. But what's really also interesting is that the VA study that came out that showed that hydroxychloroquine wasn't effective, according to them, that study was a mess. And Gilead, who is the pharmaceutical company making remdesivir, they were behind that VA study that basically trashed uh, hydroxychloroquine. A cheap therapeutic would be a complete game changer. I'm glad you said that, uh, Emerald, because uh, it's $11 for yeah. the complete cycle. And you can take it at home with a glass of water, mm -hmm. a couple of pills a day. Remdesivir, which is the other therapeutic out there, um, you've got to be in a hospital. you got to stick a needle in your arm 10 times over the course of 10 days. Yeah. It's $3,000. It's crazy. Big Pharma likes to sell that. They don't like to sell 11 buck medicine. And, and there's some politics, I think, involved in some of that. But um, this is going to be an important test. What, what we've seen is there's there's people in the media as well as the medical community who appear to hate Donald Trump more than they love saving American lives. And, and as soon as President Trump supported the idea of hydroxychloroquine, guess what? The media was all over him. Pimping, and I don't use that word lightly, bad studies that drew wrong conclusions based on the analysis of late treatment use, which will not work, versus early treatment use, which the Detroit study says will.